today is an important day because we have an interview with a very interesting person. He co-founded his first company in 1999, sold it in two years. Then he started Music Strands, which uh, developed music solutions which were acquired by Apple. Yeah, that Apple. And now he's the founder and information officer of the biggest fintech company serving like 600 banks, including uh, Barclays, BBVA, Deutsche Bank, and all of the others. His name is Mark Torrance. Hi, how are you? Hi. Eddie, pleasure to meet you. Likewise. And uh, thanks for welcoming us here. No problem, my pleasure. Yeah, so that's the place for engineers. Yeah, this is the main room where the engineers um, are working. Uh -huh. And in that area we have uh, marketing and, and the sales people. You have 200 people? Yeah, overall. So, but uh, this is just one of the offices, right? Yeah, that's one of the offices How in, many people in Barcelona. Here? Uh, here in Barcelona we are about 80 people. 80? And we have this office and another office across the street. Ah. Uh, now we are planning to, to have a bigger office so everybody can sit together. And what about Miami, Kuala Lumpur? Yes, and this uh, is also Buenos Aires. Offices. Yeah, yeah, these yeah. are other offices in order to s better serve our customers that are uh, in their abroad. places. Yes, exactly. Uh, and these are magicians. Yes, <laughs> these are the, the, the stars of the company, you know, the yeah. people that uh, make the um, magic happen. When I, w when I was looking at strands and uh, at your profiles and Wikipedia mm -hmm. and uh, so on and so forth, uh, firstly, it's, for me, it's very interesting because you are actually, you're an engineer, you are an inventor, mm -hmm. you have lots of patents uh, uh, and successful ventures, mm -hmm. right? Which invention are you mostly proud of? So yeah. what we are good at is um, about knowing uh, machine learning techniques, for example, in that case, and how do we apply those into specific and pragmatic problems that the industry wants to solve. So we are good at making that connection no, between the needs of the industry and the state of the art uh, in subjects like ma machine learning. For example, um, for the financial sector, we yeah. work with, with banks. So what we do there is to um, analyze all the transactional data of a customer mm -hmm. with the purpose of uh, forecasting specific situations that customers may be in in the short term so that the bank can proactively uh, recommend a specific solution for that type of customers. I mean, for a standard user, uh, like who is, for example, just using banks. He doesn't care how they work, what solutions do they use. When using, for example, a simple mobile app, what, where is trends here for, for a user? We analyze those transactions in order to visualize them in a graphical way, mm -hmm. and very intuitive way. So instead of just saying a long list of individual transactions, we are displaying uh, graphs and charts so yeah. people can understand what's going on with their finances. You are... Mm, a lot about artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. right? So I've saw lots of your speeches on this subject and so on. Um, could you share the most evident and game-changing impact that artificial intelligence will have on the humanity and the world in the nearest future? I don't think that from a science point of view or algorithmic point of view there is a big uh, invention or a new algorithm. Uh, the change uh, comes m more from having a lot of uh, computing power together with uh, the data availability. So all the tasks that can be automated for the human being would be probably replaced by uh, machine learning uh, technology and, and robots in general. An obvious one is uh, all, all the people that um, work on in transportation, mm -hmm. so all the cars and trucks uh, would be uh, drive the, in an autonomous way, which doesn't mean that the jobs will disappear. I think they will be transformed into different types of jobs. For example, in medicine, I, I would imagine that doctors will have more time to interact with mm -hmm. patients, right? So all the work they have uh, uh, to do now in terms of analyzing the data they collect from patients and make a di diagnosis will be done by the machine so they will have more time to interact with the patient more than just uh, taking care of a, a specific disease. No? Regarding tra transportation, you know right now there is too much negative uh, media stuff mm. about uh, artificial intelligence in cars for example. Do you think artificial intelligence in transportation is a positive uh, movement 
or it's a negative thing? I think it's uh, very, very positive because uh, human beings, w w we are not here to, to drive machines, right? This Absolutely. is something that it's not uh, rewarding as a human being for anybody. And a machine doesn't have a good day or a bad day, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if your favorite uh, football team uh, loses an important game, probably you will drive that uh, night in a worse way of than course. if uh, you yeah. have won that game, right? Yeah. So we have uh, all these uh, human uh, characteristics that makes us very um, not very predictive in terms of mm -hmm. the quality of doing these type of tasks. I always think about artificial intelligence conquering the people's minds, conquering the systems developed by people, conquering let's call it conquering the world, like yeah. in this Terminator movie, right? Yes. So do you think this this is a real scenario when artificial intelligence can... So Elon Musk is talking about that and Stephen Hawking was also yeah. talking about that, that threat for the, for the whole humanity. Actually mm -hmm. they are saying that is the last invention of the, of the humanity, artificial intelligence. I don't think that is uh, near to, to happen. I think we are very, very far away. Um, basically because um, that theory is based on the fact that we are having more and more data and we are having more computing power and that is true but this is about the technology but from a scientific point of view there is no new algorithm or theory that tell us how we could approach this general AI as they call it or this um, strong AI so um, I think nowadays uh, we can do weak or applied AI which is doing a very specific task much better than a human being but we are very, very far away from this general AI. And um, even worse, I don't think we have any hint or how to make progress towards mm. that general AI. There is no scientific foundation to believe that this will happen in a near or midterm. Let's imagine, I don't know, many, many years have passed. How does the world look like? Well, I think, I think there is an opportunity to, to live uh, much better in, in social terms. So um, my dream is that we will have uh, the time and the freedom to, to do whatever we want to do as a human beings, you know? like uh, being creative, uh, philosophy, or having fun, or just uh, helping others, and so on. Right? I, I think there is a huge opportunity. That's the optimistic vision. Yeah. Then, of course, I know there is a pessimistic vision in which a uh, few companies will have uh, the ownership of that technology the and they will control the world or even the machines could uh, surpass our uh, level of intelligence. At that point, we are kind of uh, dead as a species, right? Because if mm -hmm. you have a superior intelligence, then you are not controlling uh, anything, actually. Don't you think that blockchain can help here? to distribute this data so that it doesn't belong to one or two companies, for example? Yes, absolutely. So blockchain is about decentralizing, right? Yeah. So there will be no uh, single uh, point of failure or a single point of ownership, right? Everything is distributed. So it's a very secure, uh, it's uh, worldwide, so th there is no frontiers and so on. So I think it can change the way we uh, do contracts uh, mm -hmm. in the private sector or public sector. And uh, of course, it can change a lot of things of how we are working nowadays. Yes. Are you a crypto holder? Do you uh, own any cryptocurrencies? Yes, I have some, just to, really? to play with them and to understand how it works, yes. So yes. what's your thoughts on this? Uh, I think it could be, uh, it's an interesting opportunity for, for uh, many businesses that can change the, the way uh, they have been working. Mm -hmm. So it has a lot of potential. So you're serving banks and uh, your main um, clients are banks, like 600 banks all over the world. In case cryptocurrency is the future and mm -hmm. blockchain is the future, and many people they think, think they will replace the banks, do you see trends uh, still operating uh, that successfully, for example, in five, ten years? Yes, because I think what we do is orthogonal to the, to the blockchain technology in the sense that what we are doing is trying to extract insights or intelligence from the data mm -hmm. so that banks can better serve their customers. Yep. Uh, we are also working on what we call the invisible banking or open banking, which means that the bank could automatically be connected with different providers and offer a superior solution to their customers. So all this is kind of orthogonal to, to the blockchain technologies. You know, it's not really replacing or competing with blockchain technology is something that is uh, aside from, from that uh, kind of revolution. And then you created Strengths out of it. Yes. Right. Um, so now it is called Strengths and it appears to be one of the biggest companies serving banks with their digital innovative solutions. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a success story. So what is the biggest challenge for, for you as a businessman 
to develop three successful ventures? Well, I think one of the challenges or the, the secrets to, to success is to, um, to be able to pivot uh, around the initial idea. So we, we started Music Strands with the idea of uh, providing uh, recommendations of music to people. But it was hard to make a business case out of this uh, type of solution. So we were selling the IP and we were able to, to change the direction and start working uh, as a fintech company. You know? So it's very important, I think, to pivot around the initial idea and be able to identify opportunities and reuse the know-how and the, team, the engineering teams that you have to, to do different things, right? Yeah, so there is no need to wait, just develop something, pivot it, and exactly. then see how the market reacts. Exactly. exactly. Cool. And be very flexible, right? Yeah. Otherwise, usually the first idea never works, uh, yeah. so it's very important to, have the, to keep this in mind and, and uh, avoid to be very obsessed with your initial uh, business plan or strategy. I guess you face, one time, you face the problem of a rapidly growing company. When... Uh, you, more, you, you spend more time on onboarding people rather than developing business. Have you faced this problem? Um, yes, yeah, so finding talent is a challenge for any company nowadays, you know, especially in machine learning or engineering tasks. That is a very uh, difficult thing to do. So we have a, a very international team. We have people around Europe and around the world working here in Barcelona, so that's one advantage of being in a, such a nice uh, city, yeah. right? Um, and then we, we are looking for people that are uh, very enthusiastic, energetic, uh, flexible as well. We are very flexible in the way of working, but also very passionate no, about what we are doing. Uh, for example, I face this problem when you have mm -hmm. to onboard and you really uh, have less time to develop business during this time. Mm -hmm. Have you faced this problem? Uh, yes, uh, what we do, we try to put people in specific and actual projects mm -hmm. right away, right? Uh, so we don't have a, a time period in which we try to um, hope that they will learn the way we work. Mm -hmm. So this is how we do it. We just onboarding them in, in actual projects and, uh, you know, so very aggressively. You just say. put them aggressively into work. Yeah, well, aggressively in a friendly way, no? But I mean, I, I mean, I mean like, from the first day, right? Yeah. Uh, they are integrated in teams and they start working as uh, other members of the team so that they can learn along uh, the path of being in a project. It's the best way of learning something, no? just by doing. And the yeah. final question. You know, I'm, I work in the Bitcoin and blockchain industry and all of these things. For me, for example, in the community, when I come back to the community and say, and, hey, I was interviewing a guy who is serving banks, my teammates and others will say, you have been to the dark side. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. So do you think... Uh, Cryptocurrencies, not the blockchain technology as it is, but the cryptocurrencies and the Bitcoin has the future. Uh, banks ha also play an important role in the economy, right? Uh, they lend uh, money to people and companies to do things. So I don't think they will be replaced uh, completely. It's just about, uh, it's a transformation. So they will be transformed in something different. Pro probably they will be transformed in, uh, in software companies more than banks, uh, traditional banks. But they will be here, I think, uh, still in the future. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. That was a pleasure.